If you're a regular person, your desktop keyboard is probably a 100% with the alphanumerics, function row, navigation cluster, and the numpad. If you're a gamer who values mouse space, you might have a TKL, which chops off the seldom used numpad. If you're a little weird, and you think you can get rid of even more keys, you might use a 60%, which is just the alphas and the numbers, with the other keys accessed via a function layer. If you think even this is too big, you might go down to a 40%, which ditches the numbers, among other keys. If you want a little bit of adventure when you're taking this last step, you might consider the Plank Keyboard, which is a 40% ortholinear keyboard by Jack Humbert at OLKB. It's got a simple design. The case is low profile, which means floating keys. I think the flat rectangular case and the grid layout makes it resemble a chocolate bar. There isn't really much going on on the outside. The stainless steel plate sits right on top of the anodized aluminum case, and on the back, there are a couple engravings, and you can put bump-on feet in the corners. One complaint I have is with the alignment between the case and the plate. I've laid hands on four or five planks in the past couple months, and every single one of them had a misaligned plate. Do note that there have been many iterations, and this issue might have been resolved in the most recent one. Another thing to note is that the case has machining marks all over it. It's hidden away to some degree with the brushed finish, but it's especially noticeable on the sides. The PCB plate assembly is affixed to the case with these five screws, and the one I have here is one of the older versions. The PCB is revision 3, while the current generation uses revision 5. The all-metal construction means that the plank feels really dense in the hand. Because it's so narrow, you can grab it securely, and when you do, it feels like a brick. It weighs in at 1 pound and 3 ounces, or 540 grams, so you can probably do some serious damage to your table if you drop this. This particular plank was built with Cherry MX Greens, which are a heavier version of Blues. They sound a bit nicer because of the weight, but they're not anything to write home about. Let's have a listen. The Plank PCB supports both a 47 and a 48 key layout. I have the 48 key grid layout, but in the other one, the two lower center keys would be a single 2U space. This is the default Plank layout, which is a little confusing, but if you go through all of the layers, you'll see that every key is there. Personally, I don't really like the default layout, so I use this instead. In the main layer, the alphabet is in the same place, the modifiers on the left side resemble what you'd find on a standard layout, I don't typically use the modifiers on the bottom right of the keyboards, so I put some brackets that I use during programming. The key directly to the left of the spacebars is for the first layer. This accesses the numbers, the plus, and the minus. I shifted the whole number row over right one unit and moved the minus symbol to the left corner. I found that this way the numbers are in positions more similar to that in a staggered keyboard. The key to the right of the spacebars accesses the second layer. This is just the function row on the top. Finally, the key to the left of the first layer key accesses the third layer. This is probably my most used layer. It's basically my navigation cluster. I put my arrow keys in IJKL, like I'm used to from the AND Pro, and HOME and END, which are keys that I use often in programming, are in what I think are pretty logical positions. With this layout, the plank is surprisingly usable for me. To be fair, I was coming from a 60% which introduced me to using function layers, so if you're coming from anything bigger, you may have a harder time. The biggest issue for me in getting used to the layout was the ortholinear part. This just means that the keys are in a grid. Hardest for me was the bottom row of the alphabet. In particular, Z, X, C, and B were the hardest for me. One upside to this learning curve was that by forcing the left hand to use B, I think I've improved typing style on regular keyboards too. With that all said, I am not up to full speed when it comes to programming. For me, it's a workflow that needs a lot of navigation, highlighting, and deleting, and it can be hard to perform these actions efficiently. Whether or not you can ever become accustomed to the plank for all workloads is up to you and your dedication, but I will always feel like I'm performing at 80% when working on it. The plank is most often available through MassDrop in group buys pretty often, and also on OLKB.com. 
Ordered from the source, it's about $105 without shipping, switches, or keycaps. There are additional options like high profile wood and aluminum cases, both of which I think look nicer than a low profile one. And finally, there is an easy on the wallet model, which can get you a kit just under $60. I think these are pretty fair prices to pay for these nice little boards. They're surprisingly usable for something so small, and if you are doing largely typing work, it's easy enough to get used to. They are being improved at every iteration, and more and more options are being offered at each round. Things like speakers on the PCB, or different finish options at reasonable prices make these boards fun to use and collect. If you like this video, like it, and subscribe for more. Next time I'll cover a similar board that I think you should consider over this one.